Welcome back. Nationwide, 14 coal miners have died. More than half of those deaths happened right here in West Virginia. President Donald Trump campaigned for and promised a coal comeback, but at what price? It's hard work. Ask any coal miner and they'll tell you it's never been easy. Coal mining is inherently dangerous. There's no other job like it in the world. It's uh, it can be hard, but it's a it's a rewarding job. It's a good job. And it's that pride that comforts the fear of any danger or being underground in the dark. It's the blackest black you could ever imagine. You can put your hand two inches away from your face and you can't see it. I love it. On the campaign trail, President Trump made a promise to coal miners like Aaron. We're going to put the miners back to work. We're going to put the miners back to work. We're going to get those mines open. The jobs actually have come back. Not all of them, but enough to inspire confidence in a state that suffered through a long downturn in the industry. The coal market's a little better. There's coal miners working. There's so many things that are getting ready to happen. As the jobs have gone up, there's also been an alarming uptick in coal mine related deaths. So far this year, seven West Virginians have died in coal mines. That number is the most the Mountain State has seen since 2012. But there is a key difference between now and then. Back in 2012, there were over 80,000 men and women working in the mines. There are now just over 50,000. It's because of the smaller amount of workers in the mines that's causing coal mine safety to face additional cuts on Capitol Hill. A September budget vote would have cut the Federal Mine Safety and Health Administration by 10%. All three of West Virginia's U.S. House members voted in favor of those cuts. We've shut down over 400 coal mines across the country. Do we still need to have an agency have the same number of employees when they have 25% fewer mines they're inspecting? Congressman David McKinley is the chairman of the Congressional Coal Caucus. He says the cuts would right-size the agency in the wake of the coal industry's decline. If mines start opening up again, we're gonna, we'll put money back in and there'll be more inspectors. So how is it that there are 30,000 less coal miners today, but just as many coal mine related deaths? We've had a a fairly long period of time where things were getting better. I'm concerned right now with the number of fatalities that we have seen this year, and particularly in the area of young people getting killed in the mines. We For United Mine Workers of America President Cecil Roberts, the number of deaths is a question no, of experience and if coal miners are getting enough training. The Federal Mine Safety and Health Administration, or MSHA, agrees with Roberts. They launched a refocused compliance assistance program in June, also known as CAP. This gauges the safety competency of a coal miner on the job for less than a year by sending out representatives to talk to these miners. Roberts says MSHA's response has created a gray area when it comes to inspections. In regards to the law, compliance visits are not categorized as inspections. We shouldn't be taking what is the equivalent of the uh, cops on the beat here out of the mines to do that. It may be like taking the state police off the highways or our detectives out, of, uh, out the street from investigating crimes. We wouldn't do that, and uh, we shouldn't do that with MSHA inspectors either. The CAP program is voluntary, and mine operators are not required to participate. MSHA has responded to criticisms of CAP, a spokesman says in a statement, quote, This summer, the recent increase in coal mining fatalities prompted MSHA to strategically refocus the program on less experienced miners who have accounted for a majority of the fatalities. The CAP program does not compromise MSHA's ability to conduct mandated inspections of coal mines. We continue to inspect all underground mines four times a year and all surface mines twice a year as required by the Mine Act. I feel safe in there. It's come a long way. I mean, if it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Well, just last week, the United States Senate voted to confirm David Zetezlo as the nation's top regulator of minor health and safety. Senator Shelley Moore Capito voted in favor of the controversial pick. Senator Joe Manchin voted against him.